to start the recording. Yeah, there you go. Okay, good. All right, great. So the power of celebration. Today, Mary Gall of Success Magnified is presenting Power of Celebration. Let's bring the joy back to small business. One of the few things we can control. Overworked and underappreciated, many small business owners can forget why they started their companies in the first place. They feel like a mouse in a maze who never finds the cheese. In her talk today, Mary is going to share her own story of building in celebration, even in the toughest times, engaging us also with music, stories, and fun. Aren't you glad you came? Mm. Takeaways, how failing to celebrate can lead to burnout. Celebration, I love this part, as a business concept and three simple ways to build celebration into your business and into your life. So that's what the program is. And here's just a little bit about Mary and then we'll be, um, this is also going up by email. So Mary Gall works with solopreneurs who are trying to do everything on their own. She shows up with celebration, tactics, resources, and support. I love this line, acting as a thought partner to her clients. I've already signed up for a session with her later this month, they can hardly stand it. Um, by prioritizing their focus on tasks that make an impact in their business, Mary helps to provide clarity and a path forward. Now that's something to celebrate. She offers clients a variety of ways to work with her, including, that's what I'm doing, the one-time 90-minute focus sessions, strategy days, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and facilitated peer review boards. I see everybody, Vanessa, make sure to mute on your phone there. I want to make sure we're all muted so we don't have extraneous sounds coming in. I would say we are ready now for Mary Gall to take it away. Go Mary. All right. All right. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I've known Joyce for quite a while. She's helped me with my LinkedIn profile. I've known Lori for quite a while and she's a client of mine and I'm a client of hers. And so uh, we're so excited to be here and share this with you. I'm going to share my screen uh, here. Can you guys see the big slides, the full screen slide? OK, perfect. And uh, so as Joyce mentioned, today we're going to talk about the power of celebration. And to get us kicked off here, I am going to start with three types of celebration that are really simple. The, we think celebration has to be this big, big thing, something big that we celebrate, but we can celebrate all the little things and we can celebrate by ourselves with a room full of strangers or in a crowded uh, stadium, right? So there's lots of ways we can celebrate. So today to kick us off, uh, I can't see everybody's face anymore, but does anybody, you can unmute and tell us, do you have a birthday in the month of May? Does anybody on the call have a birthday in the month of May? No, how about April? Who's the next birthday? Anyone, anyone? Not till September. Not till September. Oh, okay. me too. I have one in August. In August, me too. So Nancy, we'll take all the credit. We'll take all the glory today, okay? So okay. it's Nancy and Mary. So here we go. You don't have to stand up. I usually do this live, but we're going to sing. So you can unmute. So please unmute. So I'm not the only one singing. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to say Nancy and Mary. Here we go. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to Nancy and Mary. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Okay, yay. That's the first time I've done that on Zoom. So that wasn't too terrible, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, we all know how to celebrate our birthdays, right? We've grown up doing that since the day we were born. Our parents celebrated the day we were born. So that's an easy way to celebrate. Everybody knows how to do that. So you do that for your friends, your family, and hopefully for yourself. The next way we're going to celebrate is a little 30 second dance party. So I have this magic button called the 30 second dance party. So we're going to just dance in our seats. We don't have to get up or anything, but here we go. 30 second dance party. Here we go. You can dance if you want to take your picture off. You can take your picture off, but move around. Let's get some blood flowing. It's 
amazing how long 30 seconds is, right? <laughs> then you're moving. <laughs> All right, all right, that's my best friend. This is my in-office celebration. I love this button. It's a quick way to celebrate for 30 seconds when something goes right in your business, right? So that's our second way we celebrate. It's easy to put on a great song that you love that cheers you up and you can dance to that. All right, and our third one, you might need to unmute for this one too, because I want to be able to hear you. We're going to celebrate our host, the incredible Joyce Faustel, so, or Feustel, so, Round of applause for Joyce. Yay. Woo Yay. Woo Yay. Thank you for starting this group and supporting all the people that you support in your career. Joyce, we appreciate you. So yes, on Zoom, you can do the hand clap too, but I think it's fun to give each other a round of applause. As entrepreneurs, we don't get enough applause in my opinion. So I always like to give people a round of applause uh, whenever I can. So yes, a round of applause. Awesome. Thank you guys for celebrating with me. So that was just, you, you can sit down again. I don't think anybody stood up, but you can sit down. Um, I just want to check in with you guys and see how you guys felt about that, right? So uh, on Zoom, it's a little bit easier to turn your camera off if you feel a little uncomfortable. Some of us feel really energized. You feel like ha happy, right? We're celebrating together. We're, we're acknowledging each other. Sometimes it makes people feel a little uncomfortable because we're not used to normalizing the acts of celebration unless there's something big to celebrate, right? So I want to change that and uh, make sure that I can make celebration just more a part of how we operate in the world. Um, let me get back to this screen here. Okay. All right. So why celebrate? Why even bother with this? thing in the beginning in the in I'm gonna move you guys here because I expanded it so I could see more people. Um, our thoughts are constantly in our brain, right? So the study I found by um, oh my gosh. I just lost I need to put it in the slide because I always forget the name of this the study. It was done by a big college um, and they studied people for over 10 years and they came up with these numbers, which are really powerful. So they say the average person in the United States has between 50,000 and 80,000 thoughts per day. That's a lot of things we're thinking. 80% of those thoughts are negative. They're, they're subconscious. We're not consciously telling ourselves that we're negative, although we do some of that as well. But think of that number. 50,000 thoughts per day and 80% of those are negative. And then here's what really caught my attention was 95% of those thoughts are repetitive day after day after day after day. So our brain is already battling against us. We have to, we have to battle to make those positive inroads, right? And give it positive reinforcement, positive thoughts, put those positive thoughts in our brains. And that's what celebration does. It's a way to train our brain to look for more positive uh, input. So why celebrate? It does boost our self-confidence, right? So if you, if you stop and acknowledge what you're getting done, it does, uh, it does boost our confidence, right? We're like, oh, I actually accomplished that. And I stopped and celebrated that rather than just going on to the next thing on my list. It boosts your confidence. You know you can keep achieving things. It increases our motivation, right? We're gonna talk about how I use celebration as motivation a little bit later in the talk, but if you're getting things done and stopping and recognizing that and celebrating that, you're excited to do more and more. It reduces stress. Like we just said in the other slide before, right? We've got all these negative thoughts that are stressing us out, whether we realize it or not. So let's put some positive feedback into that loop, right? So that we can re reduce those stress hormones. And plus dancing around reduces stress, just like we just did. We had a 30 second dance party, get your blood flow and it helps all that, all of that physical stuff uh, to help reduce stress as well. It helps us with a positive outlook. Again, we've got those negative cycles going on in our world. And you know, if you watch any kind of news or listen to it, you know, there's just a lot of negative stuff going on in the world. 
So let's celebrate because we need to, again, anything we can do to put more positivity in the world helps everybody, but it also helps us to look for more positive things. It improves productivity. So when you are, you know, as, as Joyce mentioned, if you feel like you're just the, the rat on the treadmill or the, the rat in the maze and you never get rewarded, you're gonna not be as productive after a while, right? You're gonna say, why bother? Why am I bothering to do this, right? But if you stop and you get that reward for yourself, you're going to continue to want to do more and more. And then it strengthens relationships, right? Because when we celebrate with each other, we have a bond around that celebration. So think of birthday parties, think of, uh, you know, we're going to talk about Joyce's Joyce's 10 year anniversary party uh, in a moment. And, you know, think of the, the celebrations you have with your friends, your family, even if it's just a, a nice dinner out or the big celebrations, those big milestone celebrations. You can go back and you can talk about that with your friends and family, the people that were there, and it really does strengthen that relationship, right? You're all there to celebrate something and acknowledge the positive thing that's happening. So those are some reasons why celebration is so important. So let me tell you a little bit about my story. Um, my life is really good right now. I should put life is great, right? Uh, right now, I have two grown daughters who are out there being amazing human beings. They're in their 20s, their mid-20s, and they're out there, you know, working and through college and living life. And my oldest daughter just got back from a three-day music festival that she went to with her girlfriend. So she just had a great time. I love that they're out there celebrating and making memories, right? Um, and I have two businesses, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, my first business is 10 years old already. It's amazing to me that that's happened. And my second business is eight years old and that's, I get to do every day what I love doing. I get to work with entrepreneurs and help guide them. And, you know, my life is really good. However, it wasn't always that way. When I first left my W-2 job, you know, I had a couple of, 10 year careers before I started my first company. And for 10 years, I ran a law firm. I was, was not a lawyer or paralegal. I did everything that was non-legal in the law firm, right? So anything that didn't require a law degree came to me. And when I realized it was time for me to leave there, um, I started my first company called The Gift of Time. And I quickly had clients, which was great. And then within about six to eight months, I hit capacity and I'd run other people's businesses. I'd grown their businesses. I'd worked in marketing and operations and I knew all the stuff to do, but when it came to my business, I got stuck and I just felt really defeated. And it turned out that I had created a job for myself instead of a business. Many of you might be able to relate to that, right? When you first started your business, if you left the corporate world and I realized that I was hitting burnout, which was not what I wanted my first year into business, right? It's not what I expected to find. That having my own business was gonna be freedom and you know, time off whenever I wanted to. And, you know, but now I had all these bosses, I had multiple bosses, my clients, and you know, no benefits, no paid time off, and I was working all the time and burning myself out. The fact that I didn't know how to celebrate in my business and didn't have anybody to celebrate with because I was a solopreneur. I was like, okay, I tell my husband, I got a new client and he'd be like, oh, great. You know, that means you're going to work more. And I just, I just felt so isolated and alone and I wasn't celebrating in my business. And then I realized that I was hitting burnout because I would come home. I had an office outside my house and I would come home from the day of working with clients and you know I'd, I'd, I'd get a call during the day and i somebody wanted to work with me i was getting great referrals and i'd be like i don't i can't i just can't take on another client right now right so it was so getting new clients wasn't even something to celebrate it was becoming a drudgery something i had to refer out because i didn't i was stuck and so i would come home from the long day at the office and walk into my house and my husband and my girls were there and they'd be the first thing i would say is mom what's for dinner Oh my gosh, I'm not a yelling person. I'm not an angry person, but several times I found myself yelling at my family 
and saying, what do you mean what's for dinner? I just walked in the door, you've been home for an hour, whatever. So um, so I created a product called the Magic Meal Planner, which is uh, now, a bit, I created the actual product. I created it for myself during that time, but now it's an actual product. Um, I'll put that information in the chat as well if you want, or you can find it on my website. But um, that's what came out of, of COVID, uh, my COVID project. But that's how I knew I was burning out. When I was yelling at my family, that's not who I am, that's not who I wanted to be. So luckily I found a way to start celebrating me and the power of celebration, right? So a business coach came to visit my group, I joined a peer advisory board. I started saying, getting, surrounding myself with people who acknowledged me for the little things that I was getting done in my business every day. And now I get to facilitate peer advisory boards for other people. And uh, that's what I get to do in Success Magnified. So I became a certified coach, started my second business eight years ago. And that's what I get to do. I, I facilitate peer advisory boards. I get to get to celebrate with entrepreneurs and help them celebrate so they don't feel so isolated like I did. So I'm building in systems, I'm building in people around me to celebrate and we're, we're making things happen. And then life happens, right? Life happens to everybody. So I am one of eight children. Here's a picture of our family, right? From the seventies, you can pick me out. I'm in the front row with the crazy hair. Um, <laughs> so I'm the seventh of eight. And uh, in 2018, we're a very close knit family. My sisters and I are very close. We take sister trips together. My mom was the tr traditional matriarch, right? She was the, the axis of our world. In 2018, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And for some reason, being the seventh child, I am the caregiver of my mother and, and financial stuff and the organizer in the family, right? So, so a lot of that getting her house sold and packing up her stuff and moving her to assisted living that fell to me and then um you know going back and visiting her and and i wrote a book for her first 85 years those kind of things interviewing her for over a year so all of that ha was happening and it made me even realize the power of celebration even more because i was watching my mom's memories disappear about all the things we'd celebrated and traditions that we had celebrated through the years and then in 2019, my sister Martha passed away suddenly. And this was the first uh, loss in our family, right? So first sibling, uh, we had lost my dad actually, uh, you know, about 10 years before, but the first of the siblings to go and, and the sisters. And we're like, as I mentioned, we we're very close, our sisters. And then the next year, within a, a year, my mom ended up passing away. So the power of celebration really did help me get through these dark times and help allow me to be able to still support my clients and myself and my family through these times. But I wanna share some impact that I had. When my sister Martha passed away, she lived in, in Southern Colorado. And so the early morning we get the call, she's in the hospital and she's probably not gonna make it. So I hop in my car, I'm driving down there. And unfortunately I didn't make it uh, to the hospital before she passed. So, but I drove straight to the hospital and got to be with her um, adult children. And we take care of what we need to at the hospital and then we go over to Martha's house. And I remember walking into her kitchen and seeing her to-do list on her counter. And it hit me, it still gives me goosebumps today, that we're all gonna die with things on our to-do list. And what kind of things are on my to-do list? I didn't really have time to absorb that at the time. I remember having the thought, I can still clearly picture her to-do list on her counter. And then I went into action mode of let's you know do what we need to do to get done. But at the time, I remember thinking, why don't we create a celebration list? And so that's what I encourage people to do now is create a celebration checklist, right? Life is gonna happen to us. We're gonna have those dark days and it doesn't take away the pain of losing somebody or losing a job, losing a house, losing your, you know, whatever you've lost, the people in, that we love. But if we can create a celebration checklist, it gives us that something to look forward to and it can help us with the with moving through the grieving process. So 
after that year of kind of grieving and going through this, losing my mom slowly and then losing her, you know, actually uh, to her to this disease, I realized that celebration is not just a nice to have, it's a requirement. Otherwise, it's so easy to just sink into the non celebration. Right. And they even call things now instead of funerals, they call them celebrations of life. Right. They, they, we're trying to shift that, um, that sad time into let's celebrate what this person meant to us and what they meant uh, in the world. So why don't we celebrate more? Right. So many of you know the office. I love this because he, he says in the show, you know, I had to buy this, this cup for myself, but I'm sure my staff meant to buy it for me. Right. So, so, uh, it can seem a little self-indulgent to celebrate. Sometimes we don't know how to celebrate or we don't make the time. We put things off until someday or we think it has to be a big, a really big event before we celebrate. Or this one happens a lot with, with women entrepreneurs is we're waiting for others to celebrate us. We're waiting, we're doing all the work, we're doing all the work and we're waiting for somebody to just recognize all the hard work we're putting in. That's one of the reasons I left the law firm. I was <laughs> bending over backwards and wasn't getting any recognition or celebration. So um, it's, you know, you can only put up with that for so long and then you have to go out and find it yourself. So I want to break down celebration as concepts, right? So we know how to celebrate the big things, birthdays, new babies. We know how to celebrate holidays. We know how to celebrate weddings, buying a house, a graduation, and eventually retirement. And I want to encourage you to really stop and look at celebration as uh, celebrating the little things, right? The concept of celebrating little things. So a great conversation with a friend, the sunshine. Many of us live in Colorado, right? So we get this amazing blue skies and sunshine all the time. Let's celebrate that. Celebrate a great cup of coffee. And the most important thing, especially as business owners, is celebrate a yes and a no, right? Celebrate the things you get to say yes to and celebrate the things you get to say no to. I often tell my clients the best day in your business is when you get to say no to a client you don't want to work with, right? You no longer have to work with everybody, but you can say no to somebody because you don't want to work with them or you don't want to take on the project. That's a day to really celebrate in your business. So. I celebrate the little things. So I, this is my natural hair you'll see in the picture. So <laughs> this is me after the blow dryer. So I celebrate my, my hair as curly and I celebrate that I don't have to wear it like that and scare people and little children walking down the street <laughs> with my crazy curly hair. So I'm happy and celebrate my hair dryer and that I have access to electricity and a hair dryer. And then uh, fun little things like pajamas. I had a girlfriend give gift me these wild, bright yellow pajamas. And now I've gifted them to both of my daughters and to several other of my girlfriends and one of my sisters, because they just make me happy. And they're, they're random little fun celebrations that bring people joy, right? So when we look at the celebration concept, reward versus burnout, we talked about this a little bit earlier. You can feel like, especially if you're a solopreneur in your business, um, you can feel like you are always just looking for that piece of cheese. Like, when is it gonna happen? Why am I, I just keep going around corners and going around corners and going around corners and I don't get the reward, especially if you're by yourself, right? So. We have to find a way to build in that reward for ourselves so that we keep moving through the maze. Looking at the concept of celebration as a motivator, right? So I've written several books. The first books I wrote, uh, and I, I started both books with kind of the outline of what I was gonna write about, kind of had my chapters, you know, the titles of the chapters, the thought process. But then I really was like, let me plan the party and then work my way backwards with both books. I did that. So I, I had the concept of the books like, yeah, I think I'm going to write a book. And then I planned the party and then I worked everything backwards from the party because I knew that I would need that motivation of the party to make sure I hit all the deadlines. Right. So to have the book at the party, I had to get it to the printer the week before and to the editor two weeks before. And so all of my deadlines were built around the party for both books. For both books, I picked them up the night before from the printer. So I, I was pretty tight on my deadlines, but I hit my motivation, right? And then now I have a third book that I'm working on. 
uh, which is a celebration journal, which will be out sometime in May, maybe early June. I don't have the party plan, so that's why the the, the out date is so nebulous. Um, but it's 90 days, a 90 day journal to help you celebrate and build more celebration into your life. But that's how I use it as motivation. I plan something fun and then I work my way backwards, right? You can look at the concept of celebration as for failure, right? So we don't celebrate failure very much. We don't hear about celebrating failure, but you know, you may have seen this uh, SpaceX by, by Elon Musk. They had spent billions of dollars on this rocket, uh, supposed to be a relaunchable rocket, and it blew up in the test launch, right? Billions of dollars, poof, up in smoke. And this was the tweet that he sent out I'm sure his publicist made him do it because I'm sure he was having some choice for people, but, but congrats SpaceX team on an exciting test launch of Starship. We learned a lot for the next test launch in a few months. So imagine if we could take this concept of failure and learn to celebrate it as a way to keep moving us forward, right? So I encourage you to take a look at that too. So this is the part where I'm going to have you write down. So if you've got a pen or something, we're going to break out into breakout rooms if we have time. We should have a few minutes. Um, so write down what's a big celebration, something that uncomfortably big that you might feel like bragging, or a small celebration. It feels like no one else would care, or a failure celebration, something that you failed at but you can now celebrate. Or maybe an inspiration or motivation celebration that you've got coming up, either in the past, something you've used a celebration as a motivation or in the future. So I'm going to give you just a moment. Let's take 30 seconds and just write one down. First answer, best answer. Don't overthink it. So a big celebration, a small celebration, so small nobody would care, like your hair dryer worked. I love that one. <laughs> Failure celebration, inspiration or motivation celebration. Does everyone have one? Because I'm going to. That was our 30 seconds, 30 second timer here. So Joyce, this is where we're going to put you into pairs and you're going to share with your neighbor. So I'm going to give you two minutes. So I'll. Uh, OK, so I, I want to interrupt a minute and say, I think I should stop the recording for this, right? Um, it'll automatically time. record. It'll it'll come back and and re-record. I think when you come back from the breakouts, it should say recording in progress again. OK, so I, right now I would just pause the recording, not stop. Correct. Okay, pause the recording. Okay, and then I'll bring in the recording. Good. Now we're back to recording. All right. So I want to do a little quick exercise. So we did that share. Again, this is the first time on Zoom. So it's uh, hopefully that went well. You were able to share with each other in that little bit of time. Um, okay, so who is ready to tap into the power of celebration on a regular basis? Here's some simple ways. I'm all about giving you simple ways to build things into your work and your life. So again, going back to that celebration checklist, that's something you can do on a regular piece of paper or you can make a pretty colored, this, this template is on Canva, celebration checklist. You can go and print it off and make it pretty one. Um, it's also, there will be a one in the celebration journal. So if you're interested in that, just email me and I'll let you know when it comes out. Um, but create your celebration checklist. What are you looking forward to? Big things and little things, right? So let's write them down so you have something to look forward to. Fist pumping happy dance. This is something you can do all by yourself. I do it all the time. So everybody lift up your right hand and your left knee if you're sitting down. And mm -hmm. then your left hand and your right knee if you're sitting down. And then the opposite, right hand up, left hand up, right hand up, left hand up. Yay, 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 yay. Go faster, 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 faster. Yay, that took 10, 15 seconds, right? <laughs> so now everybody can do a fist pumping happy dance. Mel Robbins, I love her as a motivational person, a speaker, and so she has a new book out called The High Five Habit. So this is another really simple thing that can shift that brain, that mindset of put that positivity in your brain. Um, so she says self-worth, self-esteem, self-love, and self-confidence all begin by building those attributes within yourself. 
we have to start within ourselves, right? Celebrating within ourselves. So she wants to begin every day with a high five in the bathroom mirror. That's the, what her whole book is all about. Basically, <laughs> you've learned the whole book right now, right? High five yourself every morning in the bathroom mirror. If you start to do this, you'll start your day with a positive reinforcement of celebration, right? Which I love. In my book, Vitamin C3, idea number 40, if you're a business owner, celebrate your business anniversary. Joyce just had a wonderful 10 year anniversary party on Zoom, right? So it's a great chance to stop and reward your customers, post it everywhere, take a look back at what you've done. Joyce did that on her party, host a, a Zoom party, and then look forward, grab yourself a cupcake, put a candle in it, and make a wish for your business, right? We mm -hmm. just treat it like a birthday. Um, and then, if you want the power of consistent celebration, it helps you see more by doing this consistency, more joy, more confidence, more systems and more momentum. So that's what I do. I get to do that with my clients all the time. So I always say business is hard enough. Don't do it alone. Grab a coach, grab somebody else that can help you bring some joy into your business and recognize and help you celebrate what you are getting done. So there's a QR code here, also my contact information. If you want to book a call with me, I offer a free 30 minute consultation. So I'd love to chat with you and help celebrate what's going right in your business. And uh, just to wrap it up, I'd like to do this call and response. So everybody unmute yourself and I say, why wait? And you say, celebrate. Why wait? Celebrate. Why wait? Celebrate. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. That is my presentation today. I, I encourage you to go out and celebrate something. Go, thank you for being a ray of sunshine in my world. And uh, I have, I don't know if we have a few minutes left for questions. I think you do. Yeah. Okay. I'll stop okay. here so I can this see. Awesome. Everybody. One more. Just so I have one more. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. So when I bring people back in the, in the room, when they talk to their neighbor, it gets really loud. So I have my little party horn there to bring people back. To me, so. <laughs> Yeah, we have a couple okay. minutes for questions. Yeah. Uh -huh. This has just been so awesome. I don't even know where to start. Yeah. So anybody, any comments, questions, reactions? I don't have a question, but just a comment. That was so, so good. It oh, good. Because Thanks. it feels like it's so fluffy or like we, that we're supposed to think it's so fluffy, but it's like, it. that was just, that was awesome. Awesome, awesome. Good, thank you. This is the first time she's done this on Zoom, ladies. Mm -hmm. so I think give her kudos for that. Celebrate that. Yeah, I yes, worked awesome. Yes. Yeah, because this is a, I can see how this would be more fun, really, in person with a group. Person. Yeah. Because this, we're up to an hour. In fact, if you know people need that, and she can do it in 20 minutes like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Any of you talk to a group. Yeah. And, and I will say just some, several of you were at my celebration of my 10th anniversary, and it took quite a bit of setup. It was worth it. 40 people came on Zoom. A guy from Milwaukee came who found me on LinkedIn like 12 years ago. And that was really, even my husband showed up. It was hilarious. Like when I'm telling this woman about how she should spiff up her LinkedIn and he's, my husband's going, oh God, there she goes. And Lori <laughs> told a good joke of how he's telling her she should dress up better. Mm. And I'm like, it was, it was so unorchestrated. That's what was the best part. It was like I say, it was like you're at your own memorial service, but you're not dead. Right. This is right. why celebrations are so important to do when you're still here. Yes, <laughs> they are. They are. Yeah. Your story about the to do list that really got me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think once we think about that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. taking a look at what's on there, what, what are we putting on our to do list every day instead of celebrating? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jack Rand would say to celebrate every little thing, you know, you do something, you make a phone call and then you go, yes, yes, yippee, yippee, yes. that's his line, yippee, yeah. that's it, you know, my mother, um, when she knew she was going to die of cancer, decided she didn't, she wanted to know what people were going to say about her, so she had a celebration, didn't tell anybody what, what it was about, invited to people to a garden party, and, um, and just, you know, we put out papers of, um, a, a, you know, papers so people could write a little note to her. Nice. Um, but that was a celebration of her um, that she could participate in. Yeah, well, that's a great idea. I love yeah. it. That yeah, you know, they used to call a celebration of life. Mm -hmm. Awake. <laughs> yeah, yes. 
It's a great big party. Everybody gets drunk and you have a good time. Uh huh. Mm. You know what the original name of awake came from? It's to oh, sit with yeah. the body so it to make sure they don't wake up. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. interesting. Oh, like wait. what happened to Robert E. Lee's mother? Right. Oh, did she? <laughs> Her, his father. She went into basically a coma. Everybody thought she was dead. He refused to let her be buried. They put her coffin on a table underneath a tree, you know, underneath the shade of a tree. And about three or four days after they put her in the coffin, she woke up. Jeez. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and it was after that that she got pregnant with Robert E. Lee. Oh, wow. <laughs> who really wanted Virginia to go with the North. Oh, that's a good story. Crazy, crazy. But yeah, you, you, the reason you got drunk and awake was because if the body was actually dead, they didn't have embalming back then. Yeah. And it would start to. Oh. Um, so if you were drunk enough, you didn't notice the, I of the body. I wonder before people have to go. I like, I always like to have the, um, like the trailer for the movie. So next month, June 13th, we're having James Lajoie do a presentation I've seen him do before. Parts of his, he's a digital marketing guy, maximizing digital marketing strategies for business growth. I really encourage you all to come back in a month to see his presentation. And also I will send everybody the same chat as well as the information about Mary's and the, the link to the um the youtube channel that was absolutely awesome mary that was so Thank so you. good i really Thank appreciate you doing this oh i can hardly stand it yeah. and i get we i get to see her later this month so unless there's any other kind of um burning desires or whatever um thoughts to go like we can we can just sign up so thanks so much thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you for coming thank you, everybody wonderful bye, bye. bye.